Welcome to the ninth in our Seriously Pro Flight Controller series. In this video we're going to be looking at the black box feature. Now black box is a really cool way where you can store information locally by the side of the flight controller as it's flying around how the flight controller is performing and then you can review that when you get back to your table. This feature is available inside the Seriously Pro flight controller, but it is available on other flight controllers with the addition of an external SD card writer so you can save the information down. Because it's inside the Seriously Pro flight controller, it's a piece of cake to set up. And we're going to do that in the video and I'm actually going to show you it working. Now the craft that we're actually using here is the one that we've been building through the entire series. I hadn't had a chance with the weather and everything else to go out and try it with all the extra bits on it. It's a little bit heavier than it was when we first started to fly it at the start of the series. And in particular, I wanted to see how these propellers would behave. I've had a bit of a concern about them. They're supposed to be gem fan uh, six inch props, but they seem very flexible. So I also wanted to just see how they were performing in real life. So it was a great opportunity for us to use black box to test that out. Now, as you can see, one of the props has actually let go and kind of came off at the back left of the model. Because I was being quite gentle and flying around no more than about 10 feet in height, um, when the prop let go, it was actually only about 18 inches off the floor, so it just plopped down into the grass. So no damage done, which is good. But now I know that I'm definitely not going to use these props, particularly as they do, despite me balancing everything, seem to be passing a bit of vibration down into the flight controller. And that's also something that I've spotted when I've looked at the log files. But be aware that the tools that we're using here, a lot of them are in beta, so they're brand new. If you have a problem with some of the tools that we're going to show in the video, then please let the developers know and go back to those guys via GitHub. Um, the resources that we have that you can read all about this on, the first is a web page which is on GitHub, which is github.com slash clean flight slash clean flight slash blob slash master slash docs slash black box.md. Don't worry, I'll put that link in the description. And it explains exactly how all this stuff works. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take you through briefly how it all works and then we'll actually do it. On the next tab, we actually have the github.com slash clean flight slash black box hyphen log hyphen viewer and this is what you can use to actually set everything up. This is actually what we're going to play with in the video. There's a couple of different ways that you can actually look at the data. We'll talk about that later but we're going to use the easiest one in the video but I'll let you know where the others are in case you want to go and have a play. So to use black box is very straightforward. What you do is configure black box within clean flight, make sure that you've got some space in the flash memory on the controller to save the data, and then you go out to the field. Just fly normally, make sure that you're recording the flight video is uh, very helpful, it actually allows you to see what's going on. And when you arm the board, the black box bit of the software will actually make a, a little beep out of the buzzer. And that beep's really important because that allows you to synchronize the video that you're shooting from something like a Mobius or a run cam on top of your quadcopter with the actual data stream that's being stored on the flash memory. Then you come back and you pop out the SD card out the back of your camera, put that video somewhere safe, then you connect up to Clean Flight and you download that log file and pop it by the side of the video that you've just taken from the SD card. Once you've got those two pieces, you're ready to go. You need then to download the Google Chrome app. This is the easiest way and the way we're going to do it in the video. It's actually called Clean Flight Black Box Explorer Beta. There's a picture of it there on the right hand side. So you are going to need Chrome. We'll talk about the different ways you can run the app because you really want to. You can run it offline as well as run it online in the normal way that you would do by default. Then you open the app, you import the video, you import the log file, you synchronize the log file with the video, and then you can decide what you want to show overlaid on top of the actual flight video, which are those values that you've stored you're interested in seeing. Once you've finished it, then you can export the whole thing as a video file for your own reference in future. So it's pretty easy to use. So the first thing we'll do is we'll actually connect up to our little quadcopter and we'll connect up to Clean Flight and I'll show you what you need to do to turn black box recording on. 
In Clean Flight, there's a couple of places that we need to go to get this set up. First of all is our friend the configuration tab, go to the bottom there, and the very bottom of the other features that you can enable is black box. So make sure that's ticked, click save and reboot. There's the logging tab if you want to change what needs to be logged on the board, and the main one then is data flash. There's eight megabytes of memory actually on the Seriously Pro F3 itself. Internally, you don't have to add anything else. It comes on all versions of the board, and that little four or five minute flight that we'll look at in a minute is actually here. That's that one there, 640K of use space. Now in here you can erase the flash and I would recommend erasing it if you're going out for a day's flying, you don't want to, to run out of space and secondly is save flash to file. Now if we click this it'll actually ask us where we want to save it and we can pick wherever we want. Now I've already saved it onto the desktop so what I'll do now is we'll assume that we had set it up, that we'd come out of clean flight and that we've gone and flown around a field, which we actually did. What I'd recommend you do is create a little folder and then download the log file like we just did from, from the black box recording on the SP3. Save it here. It's actually a text file. If I show you what's in here, um, you'll see that there's actually nothing at all really. It's just gobbledygook. However, we'll talk in a minute about the applications we can use to use the data that's in this file to give you something useful. Second thing I've got here is this is actually the recording that I shot today from the Mobius camera while we were flying around. So this is what we're going to import into the applications as well so that the data can be overlaid over the video and that's really good because not only can you see what's going on with the flight controller you can see what was happening actually from the craft's point of view at that moment in time as well. So we need to make sure we have both of these ready to go. So now we've got both of these, we need to talk about how we actually get these two things together in a way that we can get useful information from. And there we have a couple of options. It's useful for us to go back to those couple of web pages that we started out at the top of the video with, because this explains some of what I'm going to cover. So if you want to know more about what I'm discussing, then go to these web addresses that I'm going to talk through now. They'll all be in the description underneath the video, and you can read up an awful lot more. The first, which is the GitHub Clean Flight Blob Master Docs Black Box MD, is really just going through what I'm talking through in the video. How it all works, how it's all set up. Um, also has a little picture here of a data logger uh, by the side of a NAS A32 and how that's all configured. So if you're watching this because you've searched for Black Box, but you have a NAS A32 rather than SP3, how it's all done is all on here. Second tab we had a look at is a little bit more useful. This is the black box log viewer. And in here, we can actually download the zip file that contains all of the files and we can save them locally. So we don't have to be connected to the internet in order to run everything. So I'm just gonna briefly pop this onto the desktop and we'll come back and have a look at that in a second and you'll see why I've downloaded it. So if you go and look at github.com slash cleanflight slash blackbox hyphen log hyphen viewer, this is a fantastic resource. It actually explains all about the application, how it works, and the different ways you can install it. Now, you can install it from the Chrome Web Store. So just like you installed the original Cleanflight application so that it appears as an app when you go into all of your Chrome apps, you can also download the clean flight black box bits and pieces as well. And you can just run it here alongside clean flight. You get another icon with the same CF logo with all these wibbly lines on. If you click on that, it'll run. Now that's great. It's nice and easy, dead easy to set up. You just do go to the Chrome store, search for black box and you'll find it. Problem with that is that you have to be connected to the internet in order to run it. You can manually install the Chrome app, and I think this is a great idea. You can download the contents of this repository by clicking the download zip button, and then you open up the extensions page. If you follow those instructions, then by downloading that file, which is what we did here, 
you can actually run all of the bits and pieces and because the, all the files are local then you don't have to be connected to the internet. This is really handy if you're on the flight line and you want to have a look at a black box recording uh, without being connected to the internet. Maybe because you're somewhere where the uh, wireless isn't great or there's a rule in force to turn off all mobiles and uh, wireless comms. Third way to do it is you can run it as a web page. Again, download zip, and this time you can click on the index.html, which is in those files that we've just looked at. Just be aware though, downsize is you're limited to a 500 megabyte in size video file, which uh, for some of the HD cameras and the length of flights that some of us are doing isn't going to cut it. So we are actually going to use this app, not on this little netbook that I'm currently using. We're going to have to take a video of one of the large computers in the den and that's a little bit more capable. You can't run this very well on a machine that doesn't have enough horsepower. It's rendering video and graphics and everything so if you have only got a little baby Intel Atom CPU inside it's going to struggle. You need something with a little bit more clout. The last set of tools that are out there that I'm not going to go through in this video but I'll let you know they're available is if you go to github.com slash cleanflight slash blackbox hyphen tools there's all of these extra files as well and in here is all of these things like the blackbox decode tool which allows you to, to take the text file that you download from out of cleanflight and do things with it, turn it into CSV type files so you can upload those into things like Excel or another spreadsheet and you can also then use it to export a number of still images that you can then composite over the video in your own sweet time using your own video editor of choice. That's a little bit uh, more involved than the way we're going to do it. I'm going to show you the easy way. So make sure that you've gone into Google Store Make sure you've searched for Clean Flight Black Box Explorer and installed it and then you're going to run it and we're going to then put those two files together and I'll show you the last step on how to do everything. Again, apologies because we're about to go off the netbook and we're about to shoot video of a screen because I don't have the capture software on some of the bigger machines in the lab. So here's the application running on the PC. I'm going to click open log file video and what I'm going to do is look at those two files. So there's the two files we were looking at. So I'm going to hold the control key and click both of them at the same time. So I have them both selected and then I'm going to click on open. Now what we have here is an actual view of the image itself and also the overlaid information as well. So we are looking by default at the four motor outputs and we're also looking at the gyroscopes too. We can also decide to add extra things and uh, we can add a graph so we can have motors, gyros, PODs, gyro plus PID roll, pitch, your accelerometers, we can add those too. But for now, we'll leave it as it stands. Now the thing we need to do is to listen for that beep. So what I'm going to do is play the video until I hear that arming beep and then we're going to click start here to start the synchronization. So let's start the video. That's the arming beep. So I'm now going to click start log here and now if I continue to play the video hopefully we should have the files and the data overlaid and matching what's happening on the screen. So I'll continue playback. And here we are working great. So now you can see at the bottom we have all the gyroscopes and again there's a little bit of vibration coming in so I'm going to have to have a look at that. That could be due to these silly props. So I'm going to change those out and try it again. And we have all of the different motor levels which are changing all the time. You can see graphically here how much thrust is going in each motor. Now because I'm tilted forward for forward flight you would expect that the back two motors are having more power up into them than the front two so that the back's lifting up. That makes sense. And also nicely you can see the position of the sticks on my transmitter. So right now I'm just below half throttle and I'm gently nosing over. So let me just play a little bit more. You can see here that I'm really, really cranking around. Um, this time we're about half throttle, little bit of right yaw 
and pretty much level. We can see here we've got some wacky stuff going on with the gyroscopes. But we have an awful lot of uh, knobblies on here that I definitely need to have a look at. So if we wanted to add additional pieces, then we could go into graph setup and we could actually then add gyro plus PID roll. And here we got a whole nother set of data at the bottom. Now, as well as having the information on the screen, you can go down, see where you are in the actual video itself, and also have all of the different field values that you can see exactly what's going on at that point in time. Now, the nice thing is too, we can export the video. Click on export video, and then you have all these options. We can um, have the frame rate, we can have the resolution, and how much dimmer the video of the actual flight is behind the graphics themselves. It does save them in WebM format, which is a bit interesting. A lot of the standard editors won't like that. But when you're ready and you've got everything set, you can begin export. So that's how you get the files together and that's how you view what's going on. Really nice tool and a very powerful way for you to continue to watch what's happening on the model and to see whether or not the changes that you're making are having a beneficial effect, not only in the way the craft feels, but in actually the way the craft is performing as well. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.